So let's work through some applications of exponential and logarithmic functions. And in particular, let's go back to this continuous compounding model, the A equals P times E to the RT. And so let's say we have again $1,000 to invest in a CD, just a saving account in some sort that gets interest that pays 4.25% compounded continuously. So because it's compounded continuously, you're using this A equals P E to the RT formula. And so the two pieces of information we're given are the starting value, the initial value, which is the P. So that is $1,000. And then we're also given the rate or that multiplier, which is 0 0.0425, because we want to use it as a decimal. So based on the information, our formula is A is equal to 1,000 times E to the RT, which is 0 0.0425 times T. Now, this is actually a function an input output function. The input is time, so that's the changing independent variable, and the output is the final value of the function, or the final value of the account. So the input is t, which is time in years, and the output is the a, which is the final value of the account. So now we can take a look at some scenarios with being given either the input or the output and then solving for the other value. So here, let's say we are willing to invest money for five years. Then we want to identify what variable is this five years and what are we actually solving for? So if we're given five years, we're given T is equal to five. We're given the time, that's the input and we're asked to solve or find A, which is the output. So plug these values in into the function and you have A is equal to 1000 times E to the 0 0.0425 times T, which is five. And this is nice, there's no solving, no algebra that we have to do. We already have A by itself. So you can just throw this into the calculator and you should get A is approximately 1,236 and 77 cents. So now in this next one, we're given that we want to have $2,500 in our account. So we want to have this much, which means we are given A, we're given the end value or the output. So that's the output and we're asked to find T, which is the input. So let's set this up into our equation from above, or our function from above. So we have 2,500 is equal to 1,000 times E to the 0 0.0425 T, and we wanna solve for T. Now T is a variable in the exponent, so we're gonna have to use some of the exponential solving methods that we did previously. So before we do that, we need to get the base to the exponent by itself. So we have to get rid of 1000. So we divide by 1000 on both sides, divide by 1000. And we have on the left hand side, this is 2.5 is equal to e to the 0 0.0425 t. And here again, we can use logs as inverses, or we can roll the log. Let's mix it up. Last time we did logs as inverses. Now let's roll the log. So rolling the log, you have E as the base and you're swapping the place of the exponential and the result. So we have, we can write on the right hand side, E is the base, so that's natural log because that's log base E of 2.5 is equal to the exponent, which is 0 0.0425 times T. And now from here, we just want to solve for t. So we just have to divide by 0 0.0425 on both sides. Divide by 0 0.0425. And the result that we have here is that t is approximately, because t is solved by itself. So we're just doing natural log of 2.5 divided by 0 0.0425. And this should give you about 21.56 years. So in many situations when we were working with the exponential growth model or just exponential models in general, we will often have the same format. So the general exponential model that we introduced 
at first was y is equal to a times b to the x, where a is like the initial starting value, so when x is zero, and then b to the x, that b is that base multiplier. So think about when we were working with Yolanda, she had a 3% raise each year, so that b base multiplier was 1.03. So the b is just one plus the, the rate. And then in often cases, especially with real world stuff, when you're working with this continuous compounding, we write it as a equals p times e to the rt, which we've already been working with before. p is that initial amount, e is that base multiplier, I guess e to the r is the base multiplier where r is the growth rate, t is that time, so the x or the t is the ind independent or input variable, and then the y or the a is the output or final variable. So oftentimes this exponential model, in particular the continuous compounding model, is used with radioactive dating. And radioactive dating you hear a lot of the times is you'll hear something had carbon dating or they can date back how old a fossil is or how old a ancient artifact is. They take some organic material from that fossil, from that artifact, and they see how much carbon-14 is in this organic material or how much carbon something. It's just some compound which contains carbon because carbon is in all living things. And so they know the decay rate or they know what's called the half-life of a lot of these carbon compounds. And so in particular, when you are told what the half-life is of something, half-life means it is the amount of time it takes for some quantity to decay to half of its original amount because over time the carbon in the organic material decays over time it, it loses or decreases that carbon compound and if you're told the half-life the half-life is how long it takes for that amount of carbon to get to half of the original amount and so if we're given half-life we can find the growth rate and that's generally why we're given half-life is because we want to find the growth rate and to find that growth rate we can use either one of these methods where it's the natural log of one half divided by the half-life or negative natural log of two divided by the half-life. Those are both the same thing. And so let's work with an example here where we are given that a juniper tree sample found in a Kiva beam contains 2.6 grams of carbon-14. And a similar sample when first cut contains about 3 grams of carbon-14. So that 3 grams of the carbon-14 is sort of like the initial amount of carbon-14 when it's first you know out open to the air and so let's write out what we have and, and what we know so we have that the final value of the carbon-14 in this juniper tree or in this kiva beam is 2.6 grams so this is the end value or the current value and the initial value of the carbon-14 when it is first cut from this juniper tree is 3 grams. So this is the start. We also have that the half-life is 5,700 years. So what we want to figure out is how old is the tree. So this question of how old is the tree, it's asking us to find t or find the time t and so we're, we're working with the a equals p times e to the rt we're working with that exponential continuous compounding formula or function but first we need to find what the growth rate r or in this case the decay rate r is of this carbon 14 because we want to find what is t. So we have the a, we have the p, we're missing the r. We can't solve for t unless we have r because then there'd be too many variables and we wouldn't be able to effectively solve. So let's find what the r is. Let's find that growth rate or decay rate. So to find the r, we use that the half-life is 5,700 years. So 
using one of these formulas from above, it doesn't matter which one, r is equal to negative natural log of two divided by the half-life, which is the 5,700. So maybe this arrow should actually be pointing right here. This is the half-life, the 5,700. And from here, we already have r by itself. We just use this little nice formula and we can solve for this expression in the calculator. So let's simplify this in the calculator. We have the fraction natural log of two, and this is negative natural log of two, so put a negative out front, over the half-life, which is 5,700 years. Now we get this scientific notation of negative 1.216 or so. And what this means, remember scientific notation is since it's a negative in the exponent, you move the decimal over to the left four times. So the rate here, it's actually a decay rate, which means the carbon-14 is decreasing over time. So in scientific notation, let's write this as negative 1.21605 or so times 10 to the negative 4, which is negative 0 0.123 and then 4. So we move the decimal over four times, 21605 and so on. It just keeps going. So this is negative here because carbon-14, that compound, is decaying. It's decreasing over time. So I'll give this you know, a dotted box. It's not our final value that we're looking for, but it is a helpful value to help us find what is that age or how old is the tree. Let's now use this to solve for t. So let's find t by setting up all the stuff that we know and what we just found, which is the decay rate. So we have a, which is the 2.6 grams is equal to the three, which is the P, the initial value. So we're using this continuous compound formula times E to the R, which is negative 0 0.00012. I'm just put dot, dot, dot. We're gonna use the answer function in the calculator times T. And now we wanna get the exponential by itself because we need to get E to the base by itself. We can use our log approaches. So we want to get the E by itself. So we divide by three on both sides and we have 2.6 divided by three. And so we can just leave this as 2.6 over three uh, just to save having to write the big long decimal. And this is equal to E to the negative 0 0.00012 T. And now we can do our different approaches of solving for T. Let's roll the log. So we have E is the base and the exponent and the result swap place. So we have on the right hand side, this is the natural log of the 2.6 over three is equal to on the left hand side, the exponent, which is negative 0 0.00012 T. And then from here, we wanna solve for T. So divide by that rate, which is the negative 0 0.00012 divide by that same thing on the other side, negative 0 0.00012. And so now we're putting all this in the calculator. So put this in the calculator and we should get T is approximately, well, let's see. So we have this value in the calculator already as our answer. So if we hit this ANS button, it uses that previous answer. So we're going to utilize that to do this calculation. So what we're doing is the natural log of, so we go to the function natural log of, 2.6 divided by three, and we're going to close this parenthesis, and we're going to divide this all by the answer, which is that negative 1.216 times 10 to the power of negative four, or the negative 0.0001216, and we end up getting 1,176.77. So we have T is approximately 1,176.77 years. So let's see some more examples of using this exponential formula. So remember that formula that we're working with is the a equals p times e to the rt. And so we're working with this carbon dating again, 
the carbon-14 in uh, a particular sample has 30% of its original amount. And so we want to figure out how old is the sample. So it seems like at first we're not given enough information because let's write out what we know or what we have. We have that a sample from an archaeological dig has 30% of its original carbon-14 left. So we have 30% of original. And that's all that we're really being given here. Well, actually, we already found what the rate is. It's the same carbon-14, same compound, which, remember, is the negative natural log of 2 over the 5,700. So we found this from last example, which is you know approximately that negative 0 0.0001216 and, and so on. And so what we want to find is how old is this sample? So we want to find the T or the time. And so from here, we need to figure out what is that A and what is that P? And it actually works out where if we're told there's 30% of the original sample, we can use any initial value that we want as long as the ending value is 30% of the initial. So a nice initial value to use is, let's say there's a 100 grams or 100 carbon-14 in the original. So let's pick P to be equal to 100. So A is equal to 30% of 100 is, well, 30. This is 100 times 0.3 or 0 0.30, which is the 30% the of 100. So we have each of these pieces or each of these parts that we need for the exponential equation to solve for t. We have the r, we have the p, and we have the a. So let's plug all this into our exponential. So put all this in, and we have a, which we are choosing to be 30 after we chose p to be 100, times e to the r, which is that negative 0 0.0001216 times t. So it's pretty much the same exact process where we want to get t by itself. So we need to first get the base by itself before we can use any of our logarithmic approaches. So divide by 100 because we want to get that base by itself, divide by 100 on the other side, you end up with 0.3 is equal to e to the negative 0.0001216 t. And now we have the base e to the power of the exponent, which has t as the variable in there. And so let's, since we've been doing rolling the log, let's apply the natural log. We're going to use inverse logs so we apply the natural log on both sides. And we have on the left-hand side, this is the natural log of 3 is equal to, on the right-hand side, this is the natural log of e to the negative 0.00012t. And because natural log is base e, and you have base e as the input, then those cancel with each other and just left with the exponent. And so you have natural log of 0.3 is equal to negative 0.00012 t. So we want to get t by itself. So divide by negative 0.00012. Divide by that same thing on the other side, negative 0.00012. And so we have t is approximately, now we're doing natural log of 0.3, divided by this rate, which we found earlier. So in the calculator, let's see how we do that. Now, when we use the answer button again, it's going to give us this previous answer. So we don't want this previous answer. We want this old answer of the negative 1.21 times 10 to the negative 4. So what we can do is we can just retype this in negative function natural log of 2 divided by 5,700. So hit enter. Now that's the answer. When we hit the answer, the ANS button, that's what it gives us. So that's what we want. And we're doing the natural log of 0.3 divided by that previous answer, divided by the rate. So we hit ANS, and this is the value of t, 9,900 and about one years. So 
this doesn't have to be just with carbon dating. We can do it with most continuous rates. So let's say we have the consumption of electricity has increased at a continuous rate of 6% per year. And we want to see how long it will take for the consumption to double at this rate. So we're looking for how long. So since it's asking how long, it's asking us to find time, find T. And we're talking about the consumption to double. So in this situation, what we're looking at is our input, or let's write out what we have. We have that the consumption is going to double. We're looking at when the consumption will double. So that means that we can choose anything that we want for the initial, as long as the ending value doubles. So again, 100 is a nice number. So let's just pick P to be equal to 100. And it doesn't matter what we pick the P or the initial to be, as long as the A is twice as much, so which is 200 here because it is double. And then we have that the rate at which the consumption is increasing is 6%. So the R is 0.06 or 6%. So let's put all this into our A equals P times E to the RT formula. We have the ending value A is that 200, where the initial value we chose to be 100, that P, and then we have E, which is just a number again, to the power of R, which is 0 0.06, much nicer than the previous rates we've been working with, times T, which we don't know, that's what we're solving for. And so we have the unknown variable T in the exponent, so we're solving the ex an exponential equation. So we need to get the base to the exponent by itself, so we need to get rid of that 100, so divide by 100, since 100 is multiplying, we're gonna undo that multiplication, divide by 100 on the other side, so we have 200 divided by 100 is two, is equal to e to the 0 0.06 t, so let you know let's mix it up get some good practice with both methods of solving exponentials we're going to roll the log so e is the base and the 2 which is that result and the exponent which is the 0 0.06t swap place so on the right hand side you have the natural log because that's log base e of 2 because the 2 is coming over to the other side and then on the left hand side by itself the result is the exponent 0 0.06t and now you want to solve for t, just divide by 0 0.06 on both sides. And now we can just throw this into the calculator, natural log of 2 divided by 0 0.06. That means we have t is approximately 11.55 years. Now these examples of these problems that we've been working with have been where the setup is exponential. But we can also work with, in the real world, there's not as many examples of logarithmic models in the real world, but there are some. In particular, one of them is the Richter scale, where I is the intensity of the earthquake, and I sub zero, or IO, is a comparative earthquake value. So an, an earthquake intensity of a certain size, and it's usually a baseline for all comparative values. So the way the Richter scale works is you have a baseline IO strength or magnitude of an earthquake. And then the I is the intensity of a particular earthquake that you're trying to measure on that Richter scale. So if we have an earthquake that measures 8.2 on the Richter scale, we want to find the intensity in terms of I. So when we say in terms of I, this means that our answer is going to have the IO in it. So we're trying to find the intensity. So we're asked to find the intensity. So that means we want to find I. We want I, which is the intensity. And we have R is equal to 8.2. And that's all that we have. And that's actually all that we need. So we put this into the Richter scale formula, which is R is equal to log of I over I O. And so we have R is 8.2 is equal to log. And remember, if the log is not written, this is log base 10, log base 10. So it's log base 10 of I is what we're looking for over IO. So we're trying to solve for I, we're trying to get I by itself. 
So to get i by itself, well, first off, it is trapped inside of the log. So in order to get it outside of the log, we can convert to the exponential form by rolling the log. So remember, we have 10 as the base, and we're swapping the input and the output as the exponentials. So we have the base is 10, and that's going to have the power of 8.2. And this is equal to now on the other side is i over i. Oh, and we want to solve for i. So we multiply by i o on both sides to get i by itself. So multiply by i o. And so what we have is that we have i is equal to 10 to the power of 8.2 times i o. But now let's see what is 10 to the power of 8.2. When you put this into your calculator, you should get i is equal to 158,489,319.2 times I O. And so oftentimes with growth models, we talk about this exponential growth as this idea of forever increasing value that goes on to infinity. However, in the real world, there are often limiting values to exponential growth. In particular, you can think of the limiting value as like a carrying capacity. So if you're talking about a population of all people on the earth that can't grow to infinity, there has to be a limiting value at some point based on just the size and resources of the earth. Or if you're talking about a particular elk population in a forest, there has to be a limiting value of that elk population because if the elk population gets too big, then you run out of space or you run out of resources or diseases happen and then the population growth sort of flattens out. And so this is what's called logistic growth. And so logistic growth is essentially exponential growth, but with a twist of the rational function. So we're combining rational functions with the exponential function to create this logistic growth. So we have some variables in here. The C here is what's called the limiting value, or you can think of it as like carrying capacity. And then the R is the growth rate. And it's a continuous growth rate because we're using that E to the R X where x is your input, generally x is like time. And when we see f of o, this tells us the starting value is, well, let's see, let's see what happens when we evaluate f of zero. So f of zero is equal to, plug in zero for x, so we have c over one plus a times e to the r times x, which r times x is just going to be zero because we're saying x is zero, so r times zero is zero. And then e to the zero is, well, one. Anything to the zero is one. And so this gives us that we have that initial value is c over one plus a. So that limiting value over one plus a. And so let's take a look at a specific example. So let's say we have some virus spreads through a population with the number of infected people following this function, 1000 over one plus 999 times e to the negative 0.603x, where x is the number of days since the first person got sick or since patient zero. And so first off, when we're trying to find how many people are infected on day 15, so infected on day 15, this is telling us that x is equal to 15. So let's find f of 15. So when you plug in 15 for x, what we have is plug in function 15 for x, so 1000 over 1 plus 999 times e to the negative 0 0.603 times 15. And so this is approximately, we can break this up in the calculator. So this is still 1000 in the numerator over, let's put that denominator in the calculator, one plus 999 times e, so going to function, e to the x, and we wanna do parentheses in the exponent here because we're going to be doing multiplication. So this is negative 0 0.603 times 15. And so we have in the denominator there, that's 1107. And so in the denominator there that we have that that is 1.1179. 1 
And so when we actually do the calculation out here, we have 1000 divided by that 1.1179. And so we have hit enter, and now we have the answer saved here, right? We hit ANS and we see that answer saved. So we're doing 1000 divided by the answer. And so we end up with the number of people infected after day 15 is 894 people or about 895 if we round because we want to round to the nearest person. So this is approximately 895 people. And now with this, and now with this equation here, we can actually identify what is the limiting value of this epidemic. And looking at the equation, that numerator is the limiting value of the epidemic. So that's just the 1000 people. And so we want to figure out here is when will half of the population be infected. So half of the population, that's saying that the output values, so we're trying to see half of the population being infected. So we're saying f of x is equal to 500. So the way we would set this up is that 500 is equal to 1000 over 1 plus 999 times e to the negative 0.603x. And now we could solve this using our equations and using our getting the exponential by itself. Uh, we could also take a look at the graph here. So looking at half the population, so we're looking at here, half the population is 500. So we're seeing, you know, drawing a horizontal line when the output is 500. What is that input if we go down here? And that is fairly close to about 11 or 12 days. If we look how this is counting on the base here, this is 10 to 20, and it's so it's counting by twos. So this is about 12 days here. So from from the graph, it's about 12 days is when that population or half the population will be infected.